This will give a quick demonstration of uh, what you can do with a few lamp working skills. Uh, I've got a standard Bunsen burner, but it's tilted at a slight angle, not quite 45 degrees, more like 50 or 60 degrees. Uh, this is soft glass, uh, which is a formulation of glass uh, that will uh, uh, be workable uh, under these conditions. Uh, borosilicate glass, which is used uh, for scientific glass uh, purposes, such as like this beaker, uh, if you really want to properly work uh, borosilicate glass, uh, you need a torch that has an oxygen fuel mixture, typically oxygen and propane, uh, for example. Uh, one of the things that uh, you can't see because it's literally on the camera, uh, the camera is fitted with a didinium lens and I'm wearing them over my glasses as well and what that does is it uh, screens out a, a flare of sodium that occurs uh, when you work the glass and so what I'm going to do now uh, I'm just going to take a piece of uh, glass stringer this is about two millimeters in diameter and I'm heating it back and forth in this flame And as it heats up, it's going to soften and it's going to start to bend. It's going to start to give me a curve. And I can facilitate this using the tweezers if I want. But for right now, I'm just going to let gravity do it. And hopefully this will show up really well uh, on the camera. And see, at this point, I can use these tweezers to move it a little bit more into whatever position I want. So I've got a little little U, uh, and now I can take this, heat on the other side, and there's several ways to do this. I heat, and I'm gonna come out of the flame so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better, and then I touch these two ends together, and now I have the beginning of a chain link. So if I heat, again I'm using my tweezers to hold, and pull and separate, so spinning around. So now I've, I've freed this loop. And typically what's a good idea is to have two sets of tweezers, so that way you can uh, switch angles uh, relatively easily. Again, because the glass is incredibly hot at this point, I can't touch it. And the, uh, the loop is not quite finished. I didn't heat uh, the edges strong enough or hot, hot enough to really properly fuse them together. So I'm heating them and I'm actually using the tweezers to come back in and mash them. The one drawback of using uh, this Bunsen burner setup is that uh, the Bunsen burner is not nearly as hot as, again, a fuel oxygen mixture, and it's a little bit broader. So right now, I would really like to have a much sharper flame uh, to finish this, but it'll be sufficient. If you want to shape the glass a little bit, you can take a piece of graphite and actually make some adjustments. So this particular loop is not fantastic. I could come back and continue to make adjustments uh, as, uh, as I see fit. Uh, but to convert this loop into a chain link, well, you just repeat the process. You make another loop and insert it in, and I'll do that right now. This, I've got some uh, scrap uh, pieces of uh, soft glass, so that's what I'm using. Also, something to take a note of, uh, for some of the colors, as they heat up, you can see them change color. Uh, many of the yellows uh, will turn red, uh, or even black as they heat up, and uh, often the reds will turn black. Uh, the metal oxides that are within uh, the glass respond to heat. 
in fact, in some cases, you can have a uh, segment of glass that looks colorless, but then once you heat it in the flame, you will see it uh, change colors. So now I've got another loop, and you can see this has gone from black back to red. So now I can just basically insert this in here, and now I just need to be very careful of how I position my hands to get everything in the right uh, uh, part of the flame. So I'm just heating this up, and the reason why is I want to bring it down to close the loop. There we go. And even though my loop is not looking fantastic at this moment, that's okay. Uh, because what I can do is continue to heat it and shape it after the fact, after I've sealed it. For the glass to uh, properly uh, be worked, it needs to be hot enough uh, so that it flows. And what I'm basically doing is taking the two ends of uh, that glass rod and heating them, pushing them together, and reheating them so they flow into each other. So that instead of having a uh, gap in between, they're now one piece of glass. And right now I'm using the graphite to come back in and make some adjustments. So right now both of these loops uh, look uh, dark red uh, to my eyes, but now as they cool down, or, uh, you'll be able to see, especially, you'll see the yellow come back as, uh, as it cools. I have the lights turned off in the lab uh, to try and uh, highlight the flame a little bit more, so the color might be a little bit muted. Uh, but we, we started with this kind of canary yellow, you can see at this point it's orange, uh, but it is still cooling down. And it takes uh, a few minutes to get back to uh, uh, its, its base color. You can see at the top it's starting to do that. The reason it's, it's cooling more on the top is because by being in contact with the graphite, it's actually transferring some of its heat into the graphite. But it's still too hot for me to touch without burning myself. But there you go. So, uh, and I could come back and clean up, uh, especially the, the first loop, the red one, a little bit if I wanted to. But once you've made your first link, uh, that gives you a lot of experience right there of uh, shaping glass and fusing it. And then you make your second link where now you're interconnecting uh, two links. Uh, and then you're off to the races because once you've made the first you know, two links of your chain, now it's just a matter of repeating. And what you'll find is that as you progress, uh, you should get better. In this case, because I'm, I'm kind of rusty uh, and just not very good, my first link wasn't uh, fantastic. My second link was much better, and presumably my third and fourth and fifth link uh, will get more consistent and hopefully be better. So uh, just uh, uh, a few seconds of practice uh, uh, of, of heating the glass and shaping it, uh, being a little bit patient with it, uh, will pay off as if you dedicate uh, uh, enough time, uh, you can start making much, much more sophisticated glass uh, structures. Uh, this is a rod about seven millimeters in diameter uh, of uh, colorless uh, soft glass. And the thicker the rod is, the more difficult it is to work using uh, a Bunsen burner. So typically what I'm going to give you to uh, experiment with will be thinner rod. But just to show that you can actually start getting much more creative once you've done a, a few uh, uh, fundamental drills on uh, glass blowing, uh, if we have two types of soft glass, you know, different colors, uh, we can we can combine them. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking some of that red that I used for one of the chain links and I'm streaking it onto the colorless. 
And I have to be careful at this point uh, because as I layer one piece of glass onto another, if I don't keep them hot, uh, the stress that forms will cause them to break. So if you look carefully, you can see there's a little high spot at the very end of my streak. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to mash that down. And the reason why is if I don't, that will be the point at which it causes the glass to break. And then I'm going to come back and heat that entire new section up till it becomes glowing. And that indicates that uh, the two pieces of glass are now fused. Uh, and that should minimize stress. And for uh, no particular reason, I just took my tweezers and I straightened out the line because it had a little bit of a curve to it. So it's molten enough that I could take it and uh, move it back in. Uh, I, this is just a, a practice piece, so I don't really have anything particular I want to make with it. Uh, besides, like I said, just, just demonstrating the, uh, the effect. And I think what I'll do now uh, is I'll take some of the yellow and I'll streak it onto the opposite side. Again, show what I'm doing. And I got more of the yellow glass onto the uh, colorless rod than I wanted to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tweezers, I'm going to pinch and just pull that away and throw that into a waste beaker. And then do that one more time. And then I'm going to get it hot again and then push it back down and then go from there. So at this point I have colorless glass and I've streaked the uh, sides, uh, uh, opposite sides of it, uh, with some colorless glass. And if I was uh, making an icicle or uh, some other structure, uh, typically what you do at this point, and I'm going to demonstrate this, is uh, you twist the glass. So I've got another uh, piece of glass rod, colorless uh, uh, soft glass that I'm going to use as what's known as a punty. So it gives me a point of contact. And so now I rotate the two of these together and I'm going to focus the heat onto the area where I've streaked the glass uh, with color. And I'm holding my hands actually in a kind of a weird position uh, for the camera. Normally I would not hold the glass as I'm doing it right now. Uh, I would be more like in this position, but I'm trying to uh, give you a better angle of what's going on. So now I can take it, give it a little pull and twist. Give it a pull and a little bit of a twist. and just keep repeating that uh, until I'm either completely used up all the glass uh, that has the color on it uh, or I'm just happy with with what I have. So. I'm changing my uh, hand position and the angle of which that I'm heating the glass so that I don't thin it out too much. So it's a little thinner than I wanted. With Boro, I, uh, I will come out of the flame to pull and twist, but with this setup with the Bunsen burner, just because of the relative uh, lower temperature, you can get away with pulling and twisting in the flame from what I've, from what I've gathered. So there we go. Let me go back and forth. So you can see, I've, I've basically made uh, a little helix. I've got the glass twisted uh, and I'm tapering it as well uh, to thin it out. This is uh, one of the uh, uh, methods to make uh, something decorative like an icicle or a pendant 
uh, or whatever, whatever you want. And as a bonus, I'm going to put a loop on the end. So what I want to do is I want to pull out some of this colorless soft glass. I want to thin it out a little bit. And as I'm rotating, I am gently pulling, and that does help thin out the glass. But if I'm not patient, and by the way, I'm going to go back and forth to reheat the rest of the icicle, just so that way I can make sure it's not going to crack on me. The thinner the glass is, the better, as far as its resistance to cracking. As glass gets thicker, uh, the temperature difference uh, also increases as it cools down uh, between the thick and the thin spots. That creates stress, and then the glass breaks. So here, by keeping this as thin as I can get away with, I should be okay. So I've got a section of glass that I've pulled out. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna terminate this. And I'm gonna take this, I'll show it from this angle. Go back and heat this again. Uh, I'm gonna take this, heat it up, let it collapse on itself, and that will be a little loop. I've made many icicles before using borosilicate. Uh, this is uh, one of the uh, few attempts I've done this with uh, soft glass. So it's, it's a learning process even for me at this stage. So I can take this, give it a little pull. And even though I'm not particularly happy with the shape of the loop at this point, that's okay, because what I'm going to do is now that I've got it curled onto itself, basically making, making a loop, I'm going to heat it up nice and strong and get everything in that region molten. And then I'm going to use the graphite reamer uh, to shape it a little bit. Yeah. And this does take, again, practice. Uh, the more experience you have, the better, and patience. And I'll call that good enough. I come back in to give it a little bit more heat. I could work, like, right in there a little bit more. But overall, it's, it's going to be perfectly acceptable. Now, before I, I detach, notice I'm going back and forth with the, uh, the icicle going in and out of the flame. Uh, and that's to help warm it back up and minimize the amount of stress that it's ex experiencing. Warm up these tweezers a little bit. And then what I'm going to do grab it here, heat at the bottom, give it a little pull and detach. So I'm going to heat that bottom part and now I can set this aside uh, to cool. I'll take a photo of it once it's cool.